government and the private sector descended on Gauteng to probe how technology can be maximized in tackling border-related crimes. The Border Management and Technologies Summit is what it was called, was held in Johannesburg this week, and it was agreed that technology can help advance efforts aimed at dealing with crime and improving border management in general. Let's bring in the Deputy Minister of Home Affairs, Njabula Nzuza, um, address that gathering as well, and he joins us via our video link this morning. Deputy Minister, it's great to see you. Thanks very much indeed for coming on. Perhaps let's begin here uh, with a picture of how vulnerable our border is currently with border-related crimes. Well, good morning, uh, Mitchell, and uh, good morning to all the viewers at home. Yes, we are having a problem in terms of our borders being vulnerable. South Africa is one of the countries that is attracting quite a number of uh, immigrants coming from all over Africa and all over the world. And that on its own makes it uh, a country that is receiving. And when a country is a receiving country, it means uh, you have a lot of people, some wanting to get in legally, which is all and well, and others uh, attempting to get into the country illegally. That would mean uh, crossing the border fence, crossing the rivers that are physical barriers to entry uh, in the country. So we, we are working on it. We've recently had the BMA established, established as a schedule entity as from the 1st of April. So we are dealing with that issue. But this conference that came into being, which I attended yesterday, gives us an opportunity to learn on new technologies that we can deploy around our frontline borders in order to secure our borders. So where does technology come in, Deputy Minister? It, it provides uh, endless solutions from as far as scanning people who are coming into the, into the country even before they depart their flights to the extent of providing physical infrastructure in the borders that is driven by technology to make sure that you do not have vulnerable segments. I'm talking about infrastructure that you cannot even see in terms of your eyes, but it will be deployed there. We're talking about drone technologies. We're talking about uh, artificial intelligence as well as learning in terms of patterns which provides you with the necessary intelligence for you to act even before people arrive at your border front line. So those are all the uh, technologies that are available and they are very important. I must say that most of the companies, you know, which were on display amongst them are South African companies which are working overseas and in other countries providing this technology. And uh, we are also looking at ways on how we can deploy that technology within our own borders in the country. So would you say if we look at uh, sort of other countries on the world stage, Deputy Minister, that we're lagging behind in, in, in this way? Well, I wouldn't say we are lagging behind. Yes, there are countries that are far advanced than us, but we do have countries that we are leading in the main in Africa. We are leading in terms of technology. If you look at our advanced uh, passenger information, uh, processing information system, which processes people before they even depart our countries. So that places us there. But in terms of technology, you can never sit back and say, well, the technology that you have is enough. You have to go and look for new technologies for the future, and that is why it was important for us to address, to attend this conference because you have had quite a number of leaders. You are talking about the U.S. being present, sharing ideas with us uh, for their border control and security, which assists us to also step it a notch up. Right. So the importance of uh, bringing the private sector on board was also something that was discussed at this conference, uh, Deputy Minister. You know, you, wh which companies you, would, would that include? Well, you had some of the companies that we are working with, uh, like CETA. That is not CETA in, a, in, in the state-owned uh, company. You had uh, companies that are providing physical infrastructure in the borderline, which are creating fences. I mean, those fences are amazing, you know, even... Uh, the torpedoes, whether you call it torpedoes or whatever firepower you to, we bring to them, they can actually withstand that. You have uh, quite a, a number of other countries coming in, others from Dubai providing that technology. I might not give you the name of each and every company, but mm -hmm. we are very excited that we had the private sector there because they are leaders, they are the ones who push frontiers, they are the ones who do the most research and we rely on them to also provide us with that research to help us better improve our technology in the mm. borders. Is there a time frame that our country has put to, to, to bringing these improvements on board? 
Well, we have mainly left that uh, with the commissioner of the BMA who are going to be running operations in terms of which technology to bring in. And obviously, there are processes when you want to bring in technology. So we must make sure that we stick to those processes. But we are very much eager to get that technology that we as a country need to safeguard our borders. Yeah, absolutely. Home Affairs Deputy Minister Njabulo Nzuza, let me thank you for your time this morning. Incredibly important story. Um, the issue of border-related crimes and securing our borders.